No excuses with Michael D. Leonardo. I'm your host, RJ Roger. We're live on YouTube, Michael. <laughs> we don't do many YouTube uh, uh, lives anymore, <laughs> as many. But hold on, before you before you go, we crossed. We had three million views and nineteen thousand subscribers today. It's a good accomplishment. Independent member. There's no RJ Rogers, no Mikey. There's no Michael appearances nowhere. Everything we do, we do it ourselves. <laughs> so I'm pretty proud because we're, we're a grassroots thing. Well, it all I owe it all to you because uh, that was your guidance and your tutelage on this. That let's stay in our own lane. Uh, you know, we really don't have guests on, and that's not to snub anybody. It's just that uh, we wanted to just build this, as you said, to see what we could do on our own and be pretty much autonomous as much as we can and calling out some other people content makers out there of course and other people that have uh, cooperated and done this like myself uh and give credit when due so uh yeah it's a hell of an accomplishment for you and uh i i owe it to you rj yeah thank you i appreciate it um yeah i was very proud of that because we've been here for a year it's hard to do this on your own and you know when, when you first start you get a lot of uh you know, it's kind of, it's hard taking a channel off the ground. You know, it's it's uh I, I don't know which one's harder, getting it up or keeping it up. <laughs> it's, you know, better watch out. There may be women over here on this channel. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's a good okay. <laughs> but a lot of channels go up and they come back down. But when you can go up and keep it up, that's that's okay. that's as hard as getting it off the ground. So yes. We crossed 19,000 subscribers. Thank you to everybody. I got a surprise coming up from you, Michael, on our last meet and greet. I got all the footage. I didn't even show it to you yet. So I made a nice little collage I'm going to show you. Oh, really? Yeah. I was going to break it. I was going to break it today. I mean, I was, I was going to break it to you, but I want to do it. Don't show it to our Patreon people first. Okay. So yeah. I'll break it to you with them. Right. Very <laughs> pretty, good. Pretty good. How you been? Great. Very good. Thank you. Um, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, we get a lot of we get all the analytics from YouTube, so we know how many of you guys watch that. Don't hit the subscribe button, it's like 60% of you, so <laughs> you guys watch every video, but just hit the subscribe button <laughs> and they come back. It's, it's not that they're just watching and going away, it's just about yeah. a lot of people come back, yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, and we appreciate it. even if you don't hit the button, we appreciate you coming in and watching us and uh, and watching uh, RJ analyze a lot of the material that comes in from many books. He he reads a lot of books, and every time I open my mouth, he goes and finds out if I'm telling the truth or not. <laughs> well, when you say something, and then it makes me go look for because the researcher, we're the outside guy trying to act like we're an inside guy. <laughs> Okay. Act like we know, you know, so, but as you tell me and you t have taught me uh, working as a researcher, who's working so close to an inside guy, you really upset my, um, how I used to look at a book. Now I look at a book with great skepticism, whereas before it was like the Bible. So <laughs> understandable. That's yeah. what makes books great. That's why you, somebody's an avid reader. Really, you, you can immerse yourself in a book like you're there. Yeah, yeah. And if you get a better writer, you know, it's even greater. It, it, it lends to credibility if you really like to read. So you can adopt whatever's in there as which history shows. And uh, some people really don't like what we're doing is taking apart those books. Yeah. Well, today, you don't know this yet, but we're talking about gas. Well, we're going to touch on something. <laughs> okay. Something okay. from Philip Carlos' discussions with gas pipe that I found and wanted to get your opinion on it. People should be happy. Someone uh, uh, had a criticism about that, but people should be happy because you get to respond to the researcher and tell us, hey, no, this is how it really was. So guys, we're helping you guys have a better perspective on these books. Um, we've been talking a lot about the psychology, the philosophy behind the Castellano hit, Gotti Castellano and that whole thing. There's a lot to be said. Why did the Chico get involved when he could have 
you know, I mean, what, why did Gotti have to do it? Why didn't Paul do, move on Gotti earlier? So much, you know, about we've been really going into that. And we did a recent show, two recent shows on Patreon, where we talked about the commission, that Gotti feared the commission. And um, having that unsanctioned hit, he always knew that's the that's the one thing that he he that he had to deal with at some point, and he knew it would come. He knew he feared that penalty being paid. Fair point. Oh yeah, it was being the bill was paid incrementally with three debts. Yeah, Eddie Lino, Bobby Borrello, and, oh, and Frankie DeChico. There you go. Okay. So I came across a section that I wanted to show to you. And, and Caso talks about this meeting uh, with Gotti, uh, Sammy, and Vicka Musso. They were having, they were at a restaurant eating. It, the restaurant was La Tavola on Fort Hamilton Parkway in Bay Ridge. You, you know what that is? La Tavola. Oh, La Tavola. Okay. It was a table. Okay. So they had... John's the boss already. He's running the family. All right. Now, he talks about the drug business and he's uh, saying how, you know, well, I'll read it directly. Uh, Caso and Gotti had been dealing in the heroin uh, business for many years. And now, from this vaulted position that they held, they could quite literally control the entire U.S. heroin market. Um, they were. So I'm not going to read every single, but I'll give you the gist of it. Um, they came to an agreement to collectively work together and that they would, this is according to Gas Pipe, that they would work together and they would control, import, distribute, and dominate the heroin trade in the U.S. Um, and he says, he notes on here, out of his own mouth, he said, of course, that this would be off the record. But he's saying that the four of them were at a table. Okay, Vicka Musa, Sammy, Gotti, Casa. Then he goes on about Gene having a stiff 50-year sentence for trafficking heroin, blah, blah, blah. They sat there for three hours talking. And, I, and then Gotti says to Caso, Anthony, I'm glad we finally managed to sit down and break some bread. Let's do this more often. Caso responds, I'd like that. Gotti says, the problem is there's all these rumors out there about you, about me, and it's easy for misunderstandings to be created. This is something we need to avoid. Um, Paso says, I couldn't have put it better myself. Um, Caso calls for the check. Gotti interjects and says, no, let me get the check. And he insisted that he pay for the dinner. Then they go on and say that Caso and Gotti were positioning themselves to take... They go on and say that Caso and Gotti were positioning themselves to take the first and fatal shot at one another. When the right time presented itself, when the moment was right, Gotti would kill Caso or, or Gas Pipe would surely kill Gotti because John Gotti killed Paul, Paul Castellano without the murder being sanctioned. It was just a matter of time before he went away for the Paul Castellano hit. Um, so he, he tells this story about because the plan then, Acaso has a bunch of quotes in here. He has personal letters that he sent to Philip Carlos. So we do know that, that, that gas pipe was involved in some respects with Philip, Philip Carlo to make this book. But he talks about in that meeting, what he was thinking, you got to pay for the Paul death. It was, it wasn't sanctioned. Give me your reaction. Oh, yeah. Look, let's tie in the November 30th tape and the Ravenite also into that. That could be part of this conversation uh, where Gotti does mention uh, Vic, Gas, Frankie Chico, and a whole bunch of other people to Frank Lacasio and Gravano. They talk about that drug business. Uh, yeah, it's something we've talked about. It, this book says some of it, what was in Castle's mind. Yeah. They were not going to let John go. John was going to die for that. And he knew that if John found out it was them, that uh, he would go to war and get Castle to be a victim. He's saying it himself uh, at, at that meeting. 
Now, the restaurant, I know the restaurant, that was uh, a restaurant around Big Louie Valerio at that time. Guy Lenny had a piece of it around Louie. So I know the restaurant very well. It's been there forever. A lot of guys hung out in there in time, but Louis Valerio was hanging out there with his whole crew most of the time. So those spotty picks is right on. I, I could see that. Uh, the people that were there, the participants, needed to be there to have these conversations. Now, whether gas pipes exaggerated about cult controlling the whole country with the heroin business, not too sure about that. Uh, if it's an exaggeration, okay. But let's take the premise that they did talk about drug business, the possibility. I, I can adopt that uh, philosophy uh, that they were talking about that because they all know what they were doing. Again, the major hypocrisy, the double standard <clears throat> that went for that. And now look at look at Casso and Vic. Now, according to Carlo, Vic, uh, John, and Gas are doing a little talk, talking. Where's Vic? He's the boss. Yeah. Right? Now, again, I didn't, I didn't read the book. I don't know if you read through line by line, but uh, what's Vic's position? No, there's no Vic. All it said is that Vic was there. It doesn't have anything about a conversation, Vic saying anything. I sound familiar with two underbosses with a big voice. And, and, and uh, plotting and planning behind everybody's back. You know, Vic, I'm not going to call him a victim, but he was puppeteered by uh, a Casso, for sure. You know, Casso was the one giving all the orders to murder everybody, as was Gravano. So they had a lot in common. Now, I, I spoke about in the past, those meetings I would uh, in, frequently catch. Well, maybe infrequently. I can't say frequently. i go by Dyker Park, which is a massive, big park golf course, and I would catch uh, Castle and uh, Sammy taking laps around that park. And, you know, I thought it was family business, you know, messages going back and forth. Because Scrivano and Castle did have a, a really, really good relationship. I mean, he chastises Castle now. But where was it then when they knew that uh, they may be participating in the, the Chico murder? Uh, he was still taking those laps and had a great relationship with Gas. I mean, Pete Chioda, who was the skipper with Lucchese, very close to Gas. Matter of fact, he was one of the guys Gas tried to murder, along with his uh, Pete's sister later on, when he thought after they shot Pete. The, Pete used to come by the by Tally's almost every Tuesday. He ran the Painters Union for them. They were very, very close. So what he what he spews now about all this hatred for Casso, that's new information. That's new drama. It was not the case in the street. So if they made this bond of uh, of uh, drug dealing, it's possible. I'm not going to say no, um, but I can't say definitively yes because I was not there. But you, you put it all together in the part with, the, like I said, that November 30th tape that's caught on tape. It's caught on tape with John talking. So he does mention all these guys. <clears throat> I mean, he has to mention at least eight names. I like to go over that November 30th tape again, but he throws out about eight names. And I think he's really testing Sammy because there was something about a, a boat that was taken by the government. And uh, they referenced the boat, if I remember correctly. And uh, Sammy has denied anything with that boat, but, you know, uh, Sammy had guys around him to get arrested for drug dealing. Big pop business. And I find out a little bit more about it recently through somebody who was very, very close to Gravano. Very close. About, you know, them having pot, three pounds of pot, small amount, but three pounds of pot in the neighborhood by the club. Somebody got picked up for it. Went to the local precinct, the 6 2. Phone call was made, went there, got the guy out. And was told not to come around for a while. Also, there was the other participant that uh, did, I think, a 12-year bid. Got 12 years or 13 years at about 10. Uh, that was extremely close to Gravano in the drug business. Nobody talks about this guy. He's free today. I, I think about it. if I want to talk about it, probably not. 
uh, was an out and wise guy. And also another guy, his partner, who did not suspiciously not get arrested with him, was uh, extremely close to Gravano going back to the 70s that was told not to come around anymore. When I was told by Gravano, he was straightening him out. He was going to make him. Then after with this drug stuff, he, he didn't come around anymore. So there's a lot of, there's, 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 I hate that smoke and fire bullshit, uh, tongue in cheek. But uh, yeah, there was there was definitely drug guys around Gravano for sure. Um, look look at Nicky Cowboy, Mike the Bat. They were going getting high in one day and they get killed the next day. Where were they getting their drugs from? Sammy couldn't stop it after the first day he found out. By either guy, and all the rest of the guys. I'm not saying all the rest of them, but some of the other guys were were cokeheads as well. Don't forget, it was the '80s. A lot of guys were whacked out on on, on uh, cocaine. So, uh, yeah, I, I I can adopt what's in that book that they had something going on. Yeah. This drug thing, you know, it's, I tell you, as a guy that's look, I'm not the sharpest outside of New York. But I've studied the whole entire history of the New York mafia from <laughs> its inception. <laughs> I tell you, the one nails on the chalkboard for me is conversations about the drug business. People are so proud to talk about the bodies they got and everything, all the dirt they did in the street. Just they cannot admit to being in the drug business. And I, we got a good answer on this. I mean, we had a good discussion. I know it wasn't on YouTube, but it was on Patreon as to why we think that that culture is embedded in the mafia we won't get into it now but the drug business gas pipe also talks about he says that right there on that next page and i wanted to ask you about that because he says um years later because he's talking about this meeting when they're talking about uh the drug business and coming to the lucchese gambino agreement between the four of them two bosses two underbosses and there's an agreement on the drug business and so then he goes on and castle says you know years later uh, Gravano would take the stand in open court and swear on the Bible that he never sold drugs, that he never sold heroin. That was not only a bold-faced lie. This would eventually come back and cause the entire Justice Department tremendous embarrassment, making a laughing stock of or whatever. So the point he's talking about is that uh, he swore in open court that he wasn't in the drug business. He was. So I wanted to ask you about that. Um, by the time you're cooperating, it doesn't matter. You could you just admit it to how many guys you killed. Drugs right. is far less of a of a conviction than killing everybody. Okay, so there's no reason to lie about drugs. There's absolutely no reason by the time you're cooperating to say I was never in the drug business. And I don't think Sammy. There's no motive for Sammy to lie at that point about the drug business. So I wanted to ask you, and. In uh, assuming you was in the gosh, the Mar the Marty Gosh book, when he talks about some something that Luciano had said to him about a meeting he was in when he was talking to the heads of the uh, of the families, and he and and Luciano was saying like, "Hey, we'll we will lose our political and our protection from like the police, from the commissioners, from the politicians, everything, because the drug business is a dirty business. Even the politicians look at that as different. They don't like the drug business." And so my question is, do you think it's possible that Sammy was told to not admit to the drug business because he thought that could hurt maybe a jury? That could, I mean, like, how would that work? Is there any situation? What motive, what reason would Sammy have to lie about being in the drug business after admitting to 19 murders? Yeah, let, let, me, let me go back. Uh, well, two things. Maybe Castro seen the future that Sammy was going to be in the drug business. Maybe he had a crystal ball and says, hey, Sammy's in the drug business in uh, 1998 or whatever it was. Uh, or Gas Pipe's telling something that uh, uh, Sammy left out to the government. You know, if you look at the, again, go back to the third, November 30th tape, the one I'm thinking about it. Does John say... We need to revisit the drug policy by the commission. Some rules maybe need to be changed. I, I think, think he does. to that. He does. He does. He does. So 
that would lean credence, right, maybe, to the conversation that they may have had prior to that, 89. So now this is this is my conundrum with this whole thing. You got Lucchese family on the commission. You got John Gotti there on the commission. You got the Banana family, uh, maybe not at the commission when this conversation supposedly takes place. But what is the Banana family known for? <laughs> the biggest drug, the, the French Connection guys, Carmine Galanti. They were freaking bringing all the drugs into the country. <laughs> Forever, right? So, yeah. you know, uh, the other guys, there's a couple of Italians out there that are free right now and still alive, so I won't mention their name, Peach Connection guys. Uh, but you had three families that were heavily entrenched right now in the drug business. They never stopped. As you know, why is Paul dead? The excuse was, Jeannie got pinched, Andrew got pinched, they were going to die. So the, the notion that uh, they were out of the drug business, Harlem, Harlem was epicenter of the drug business with all the families, whoever was up there. Come on, who are we kidding? So, you know, and it wasn't just Italians, you need more than that. How entrenched were they with the, the blacks in Harlem? There's cases. Go read them. <laughs> There's the French Connection, which was our guys. You know, Piney and the rest of them. So uh, why wouldn't they just say, "Hey, look, this is let's put it to the, let's put it to a vote at the commission at a commission meeting, and get rid of this double standard hypocrisy of a law that we have, and stop killing guys for it. Have certain people control it. Again, I'm not I'm not championing that cause at all. But why the games? Why take the lives? That's that's my hypocrisy. Again, I have a dog in a fight. I lost my brother for hypocrisy. You know, so uh, and, and a lot of other guys have died for that hypocrisy, or were going to die for it. But other people just skated like uh, like it's a joke. So yeah, we have a rule here, a commission rule that's being broke every day. So this, were they worried about Chin? This whole, this a lot of his family was in the drug business. Go yeah. way back. Go way back. <laughs> they were all in the drug business. All the drug business, big time. <laughs> so why, why couldn't that be adjudicated by uh, the, the bosses? Again, goes. I, I'm trying to lead to your question mm -hmm. as to why. Was it time? Well, you get you get caught uh, killing somebody. Federal count is life. Drug business, maybe you get, maybe you get ten years of you go plea out. I think it was the killing part, though. I mean, are you really that concerned with time? Well, that's what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. Where, where, you know, where's the balance? You, you're not worried about killing somebody. You could get life. You will get life if you get convicted. But the drug count, you, it, it, unless you have so much weight, you know, it's not a life count. You know, and guys usually plea out in drug cases anyway. So the the, the point of them. Uh, you know, be as an embarrassment for their families, like I said earlier, that they didn't want to be known as drug dealers. I'll go to your lot of question that you that maybe implied that the government told them to lie. Don't admit it. No way. No. no way. They're never going to take a shot that, uh, let's say, whoever's close to Sammy flip Eddie Garofalo flips and says, no, we were in the drug business. I'm not saying Eddie was. I'm giving a hypothetical here, right? I say, no, what Sammy said uh, is a lie. We, Sammy, they dealt drugs. They got to open the gates. So the government's never, never going to put themselves in that position to do that at that magnitude when he had all those guys that were uh, convicted from all these other families. I, I think Sammy just lied. So now Castle comes along and doesn't lie. Let's, let's take it he doesn't lie. Right, because we all know they're talking about drugs on the tape, on tapes throughout every family. They're talking about it. They had John Gotti's tapes. He's <laughs> talking about it with them. So here's, doesn't the government say this to Sammy? Hey, Sammy, before we put you on stand, we're giving you a great deal. You're getting five years. You're getting all night. We know you guys were dealing drugs. You know you were dealing drugs. I got the wiretaps right here of John and you and Frank talking about the drug business. When you get on stand and they ask you about the drug business, make sure you say, yes, we were in the drug business. 
All right, right, stop right there. Stop right there. Was Franco Lacasio charged with drugs being in that conversation? I don't think anyone was. John wasn't, Frank wasn't, or Sammy. There you go. You saw I was going to go one, two, three. But you, you, let's put it all together. Why? Why was it left out? It was so simple just to throw it in. Yeah. Don't forget, it's a racketeering case, a RICO case. Everything comes in. His brothers, his brother was pinched. His best friend was pinched. His best friends were pinched, John. They were pinched in the drug business. So, and the conversation is about the drug business that they were pinched for. So when you acknowledge something that went on, which John does readily on the tape, maybe we could put that tape up for them. Uh, or everybody could come to Patreon and hear that tape, if you like. Um, but we could, we could do something, because it's really interesting, and it's a really important part of what, what went on years ago. I can give you my own personal theory. Is yeah. I, I think it's the old, a bird in the hands worth more than two in the bush. They had him on Castellano. I mean, the things they had him on the murders, and they didn't want to make a. They didn't want to mess around with anything that they had them really fight hard for. They had Sammy, and they had him committing the things on tape, and that was enough to put him away for life. And they, they the government wanted John so damn bad they weren't letting. They wasn't going to take no risk on on losing anything. That's you know, all I can think. It goes back to these theories, too. Just just food for thought. I'm not saying um, anybody is or isn't a co-op, a CI, a confidential informant, a high echelon informant. Uh, you know, I went back and forth with one of our commenters on, uh, I think it was Patreon, uh, one of our members there. And great points he brought up about people not being indicted for murders. All the shooters, backup shooters, and Castellana. Now, we know Eddie Lino was it. We know Fat Sally was it. Vinny Artuzzo, who knows? I don't know the guy. But a lot of the guys on there, Johnny Canadian definitely wasn't, right? There's other guys that were there. Why weren't they charged? It goes back to the drug question. Maybe some of those people that were involved with CIs. Maybe that's why. It's as simple as that. Maybe they didn't want to give those people up. It, it has to be a reason why uh, the government didn't push for drugs. Again, they had John. They wanted the Paul thing, and that that's something that was the, the centerpiece of their case is to solve the biggest hit in, in history at that time. Right? So uh, did they just settle? Did they not just push? What are other investigations about drugs after that? We don't know. We, we're only going to speculate here. But the, the, the golden chalice was uh, the Castellana hit and uh, all that went with it with taking down John Gotti. Uh, so, but they had Sammy. Don't forget, Sammy didn't stop at the Gotti trial. I think he did nine. I think he had nine trials, including Chen. Vic, he testified against some horses. So uh, it was never, I don't know if it was ever tried to be induced and introduced about and crossed and crossed, crossed Sammy on the drug dealing aspect. I don't know if it ever was. I'm sure maybe there's people out there that's read those testimonies. So uh, if it was left out, why? Now, not, Gas Pipe, I think, gets arrested in 93. His information, information probably starts coming out around there. I think I guess it was 93. Uh, so his 302s are really important that if somebody could have said, wait a minute, there's Brady material in there. And Brady material may mean something that may help you out in your case that pertains to you. So I don't know how they could not get Castle's 302s for Brady material search for Brady material search. There's a lot of mistakes made there by defense attorneys. I know I'm going to get a lot of them mad at me right now. But uh, why? There's a big question for me for why a lot of stuff was not asked at John's trial. I know the judge did not let a lot of stuff in. Uh, but there could have been appellate motions made uh, in, in that aspect of stuff that was not allowed in. Maybe John Jr. has them. Uh, I'm not aware of them, though. 
on these issues, especially the drug business later on. Uh, once gas pipe comes out, what did Junior file anything? I don't remember him doing it on, based on uh, gas pipes and material about the drug business. Of course, it, it might have warranted new trend, new discovered evidence about a cooperating witness. Might have got knocked down, but motion enough. Uh, motion could have been made uh, instead of that, instead of just doing nothing. So there's a lot of things to go around. That. Like I said, I, I, I spoke to somebody around Gravano, very, very close. I, I knocked the rust off on a lot of stuff that I forgot about. Um you know, because that door didn't open for me for some reason. And now I'm starting to think about all the people around him and people that went to prison for his drug business. And people that were kept away. <clears throat> I have some major questions in here about some of those people. Yeah. I want to read you something. This is a personal letter a gas pipe said to sent to Philip Carlo. I am truly regretful for my decision to cooperate with the government. Before I, I finish this, I'll say, you told me before, you think this guy was always planning to go, right? <laughs> he had documents, papers, everything, right? Yep. So your yep. position was, that was his ace in the hole. Uh, yep. Fair? Okay. Um, he was on the lamb. He took he took books and records with him on the lamb. You go on the lamb, you take books and records. <laughs> you take money and then more money. You know, you said something that, and I heard a guy, forget who it was, but it was a content maker, talk about this, that you said something before about once you start piling up bodies, you start having a lot of dirt on guys, you, you become a liability, a lot of, and you, and you start sitting at home, laying in bed thinking, I can get the chair for this. You start 19 murders, you start getting that, like start doing work like Gaspite was doing, and now your mindset shifts and you start thinking about it. when I get busted, what's, what's the plan going? Cause you, cause you know, what's coming at that point. You start getting all that dirt on you. Am I saying that correctly? Oh yeah. Okay. Not so at all. Uh, I, I, I'm specifically talking about gas pipe. Exactly. Yeah. I think he prepared to get what, if he got caught or when he got caught, I mean, he knew he was going to get, you're not going to, you're not going to hurt for the United States government. A guy like that, that many murders. That high profile. Uh, that's why he took all those books and records. And again, I think that was discoverable. I, I, I don't know how nobody got their hands on all that stuff. So he was re prepared to go like this. Prepared to go. Here you go. And I never thought about that until you presented that point. And I, so I do agree with you. But so it made me want to read this letter. He sent this letter to Philip. I am truly regretful for my decision to cooperate with the government. It was against all my beliefs and upbringing. I know for certain, had my father been alive, I would have never done so. I have disgraced my family heritage, lost the respect of my children and close friends, and most probably added to the sudden death of my wife and confidant for more than 35 years. I have never in my life informed on anyone. I have always hated rats, and as strange as it may sound, I still do. I surely hate myself day after day. Even at this point in my life, I still can, I still consider myself to be a better man than most of the people who are on the streets today. Give me your reaction. Well, the last line goes back to his delusion and his lunacy. He's a better man. Well, you know, I agree with a lot of what he said because I reflect on that as myself, how I felt. You self-loathe. He talks about his upbringing. Yes, that was then. Now is now. Now he's in that cage, and he knows he's never coming home. So you can have all those regrets. But if the world works out better for him, if he gets out and is a free man, right, if the government don't think he's lying and tear up his agreement, is he, is he going to say the same thing later on? No. He will gloat. He would go out and be the same person. Now, that last line says it all. He's a better man, really. That's why I wanted to read that to you. <laughs> he's, he's conflicted. He goes back to what he was. Remember, I always say that silly thing, water seeks its level. He can't even he can't even just knock himself to the last sentence. His last sentence should have been 
it conformed to what he started out in the beginning of that letter he wrote. But he wanted to make himself better than somebody else. There's no way. He's an animal. He was a serial killer. If he don't get arrested, more people die. He's a better man. If, see, I get, I get, I get aggravated right away. He killed Tester just to get get the Gambino, get him mad at the Gambino family. His his Lucchese family get mad at the Gambino family. He killed his brother's doing a life sentence, multiple life sentence. He killed an innocent guy to get other people mad. He's better than somebody else. Garbage pal. Garbage pal. Him and Gravel. Him and Gravel. That's why they were so close. They should have locked the both of them in a cage, you know, and, and you know, not, not feed them for a couple of weeks, see what happened. Are you itchy? I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get to that part soon. You will be scratching. Right Look, you're going to get fired up again. You will be scratching soon. I just, you know what it is, what, what hurts me? You flipped. You did the damage. Everything you said at the beginning of that, nice. It's your self-reflection. Not a good one, but... A, 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 a just one, and then you want to make yourself better. Yeah, you know, like Sammy today. See, he would be Sammy Gravano today, on here gloating about all the people he murdered, and we don't even know the number. Right, who knows if he really gave the right count to the government? We don't even know. Bad human being, if you could call him a human being. So I got to ask you one last question. And then I'm going to ask you about the, some other uh, stuff that happened in mob genre that was explosive. So I want to ask one of my last final questions I prepared. Then I'm going to get in, and then I'm going to play you a clip. I never have a final question. This is my final prepared question. Because I'm, and this is why I think my, if I could encapsulate my, your, uh, my, what makes me interested in this subject, it's in this question I'm about to ask you. So since, 1931, when Lucky took over, or from the Maranzano Mazarese, from 31 up, okay, up until John Gotti. Just lost my page. Let me find it. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. Okay. From 1931, so we are skipping about 50 years of mob history, but just from 1931 all the way up. Um, and I'm only talking New York, okay? It was 26 major bosses of the five families from that time period, okay? Um, this is the fate of 17 of the 26, okay? Um, Mangano, killed. Anastasia, killed. Castellano, killed. Gotti, died in prison. Um, Vito Genovese, Basie, died in prison. Um, Chen Giganti died in prison. Tom Rayner killed. Um, Ducks Corallo died in prison. Vicar Musso, uh, life in prison, will die in prison. Um, Joe Colombo killed. Carmine Persico um, died in prison. Uh, Phil Ristelli died in prison. Carmine Galanti uh, killed. Joe Mazzaria killed. Maranzano killed. Mor uh, Morello killed. Dogwiller killed. Um, so my question is, what is it about the life that you guys this love so that you guys love so much when like what is it beyond because this here was was happening through everybody who said when you said we kiss each other on both cheeks, we baptize each other's kids, and the next day we're shooting each other in the back of the head, but you know what I love the life. And lot, along with a lot of other people. And that there, that question is where all of my interest in this subject is. It's like a religion almost. It's like, what is it that makes you guys, that pulls you guys where you, I talked to you, I've talked to Dom Sicali, I talked to so many people that they all feel that same thing. Where you miss it, you love it, you want to go back and you can find love for it. Even that's a two thirds fate of leadership in that life. Well, I reflect on me. You could throw my brother's name in there. He was no boss. He was no made guy. Yeah, and this is just the bosses. I didn't talk about all the time. I'm talking about death. I'm yeah. talking about how it sits at your doorstep. I lost my brother. 
Yeah. So, you know, you could talk you think you could talk about and think about other guys who died in that life. Eh, it didn't affect you. It's around you. You know it could happen to you. There's ways to navigate the life. Like I said, if you become political, if your aspirations, like a lot of those names you mentioned there, killed their way to the top. What do you think the result's going to be if you kill your way to the top? Most likely you're going to get killed. Because there's always a faction. Because when you become a boss, you have a faction. You have a group of guys that are extremely loyal to you to get there. No one person says, tomorrow I want to be boss. He's got no crew. He could be... Go kill the boss or or, or, or tr take a vote and say, I'm in today. Or go to the commission. Don't happen. You need a heavy crew. But there's other crews out there that maybe the guy you killed uh, ain't too happy with her. And they try to kill Neil. They try to kill Carlo. Right? So, you know, you, you, you put all that into context. At, when you're living in your time period, you think maybe – you have better control over it. You say, you know what? I'm making some money. I'll say, I'm making some money. I'm doing pretty good. Let those other guys have all the heat. I'll just sit back and do my thing, and I and I and you know, I'll live a fruitful life. You know how many guys we still got that are 100 years old out there living? We got a few. We have a few guys that are 100 years old. Philly Mordica, Joe Bruce to live to 100. Um, Tommy Gambino's got to be close to 100. Right? He was the son of a boss. Played it the right way. There's guys out there that, that can get longevity. Depends how you play the game and where you want to go. Again, if you don't get caught up in the politics or pick sides and on, on, uh, on coups. So, you know, for me, um, growing up in that life, I had to accept my brother's death if I want to be part of it. I knew and he knew what could happen. Now to say it's romanced, I don't know if I would use that name romanced, uh, that term romanced. It wasn't romance to me. It was an ideology for me. It was a way of life. Not that then I didn't know any other way of life. Sure. I could have done some other things. Uh, but this was something that I, I wanted to do. And I thought I could make things a little bit better in my circle, for my guys, for my crew. Put my input into maybe administrative. When John Gotti chose me to be involved up front, I didn't want to be no boss. I didn't, I didn't say, hey, John, pick me. I want to be next to your son. Let me be make decisions in the background with him. Let me help him guide, well, guide him through. He picked me for that. So you get thrust sometimes into positions. Other people aggressive taking those positions. So the guys that are aggressive taking it, there's other guys that are going to resent that. And you may pay that bill down the road, just like when John wanted to be the boss at the time he wanted to be boss. Of course, people's lives. And what about the people who went to jail for it? It caused an upheaval in the Gambino family. Maybe John don't kill Paul. There's no there's no Ravenite tapes. There probably wouldn't be. Because the Chico wouldn't be dead, would he? If they don't kill Paul, he wouldn't be dead. He's probably still alive, Frankie. This whole family lived forever. Yeah, good genes. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it it it's part of this 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 feeling, even though you're like I said, for myself. I love that life. I love the lifestyle. I wasn't there to be greedy. And I'm not throwing accolades at myself. This is just yeah. my mentality. And, and I'm sure you know by now, and a lot of people that know me from the street, no, I didn't have those green eyes that Gravano had, that everybody said he had those green eyes. Green eyes meaning nothing but money. Everything was money driven. I was more fraternity driven. The bonding, putting people together, networking. Let's do you know, that was the thing that I liked. And no matter what family you belong to, I believe we were all brothers of, of one thing. Like I said, it's, even in Italy, I never met anybody in Italy over there that, that I did business with or anything. They were still part of this thing. 
Yeah. As evil as it was at times, but there was great moments of bonding. It's just a matter of where the power shift was. If somebody was jealous of you, somebody wanted what you had. If somebody like that song wants to be you. So those are the things you have to deal with in that life. And you, you, you that's why when people say, you know, there were all bad people there before. Yeah, you, I was one of those bad people. Yeah. Somebody's eyes, I was a bad person, right? The government's eyes, I was. I was a criminal. Society's eyes, I was a bad guy. No matter if I was nice or not, or if I bought somebody a drink, or if I didn't murder somebody, I was still a criminal. But we had our own fraternity and we had our own world. And you try to navigate there to, to galvanize a bond. That's how you get a strong crew. That's how you maintain loyalty. You try to. But then there's other guys that have that other agenda. And that's what crushes that life, including breaking almost every rule. Well, breaking almost or breaking all the rules because guys do cooperate. The ultimate rule, Mamerta. That's the only rule. The other ones are all policies. So, you know, there's been uh, a lot of different times in that mm -hmm. life. That there's always been power shifts. And you need to deal with it if you're going to be in it. I help I you. you. I help you. No, it's good. Well, no, I got the, I feel like in meeting you, I discovered the answer, but my job is to present the answer to the people. We got over right. 600 people in the live chat. So I know I'm not bragging or maybe I am a little, but no, um, <laughs> um, let me ask you something that we, I asked you this before we, we even had 5,000 subscribers, but we have a bigger audience now. So I want to ask you again. For the, and it's a, then we'll jump into the next thing I want to talk about. It's close, and, and then I'm asking because of what you just shared. I told you we we're going to have another question. You I know, you got me. You know me. It's the last one. I'm going to give you that name next. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call you the Probo. You can only pick one answer. Cosa Nostra is A. Now, pick the closest answer, okay? We know there's gray, but you got to pick one, okay? Cosa Nostra is A, a criminal organization, or Cosa Nostra is B, a misunderstood society understood only by its members. Why does that sound familiar? Who said that? I asked you this before. No, but Much is that smaller a, audience. Is it, is it quoted by somebody else? Or no, no, no. That's me. That's R.J. That's Rogers. Like Say it you'll again. You'll never find it. You'll never. I'm a real. This is what I really. I really love this stuff. You'll never find it. I promise you. <laughs> I know. I, you, you tell me. I believe you. But that yeah. should be. That should be captioned somewhere. Good. Say it again. Okay. Cosa Nostra is a, a criminal organization, or Cosa Nostra is b, a misunderstood society understood only by its membership. Well. I think I articulated that just early. That's B. If I have to pick one, yeah, be only because you said only understood by its members, not yeah. society. Exactly. Society, it's A. If I'm you're talking for about you, though, I'm mm -hmm. trying to get the mindset. I want people to try to get into the mindset in the social club in your head, so we can understand how you how. People can think differently. An outsider can't fairly under, uh, cast a judgment on what they don't understand. So I, I try to deliver an understanding from the of the organization, right. not as me, an academic and a reader, as you, because it gives you a more fair shot at life, a more fair chance to live like accordingly to everybody else. It gives all people from Costa Nostra a better shot at life. So I guess... Uh, that's, but it is a criminal organization to all of us, and maybe even it is to you to a certain extent. But no, but we don't who we are. You have to, uh, uh, this is what I'm saying. But a lot of people in that life don't understand that. Like I told Junior one day, we're a disease, and he got mad at me. He bristled. What do you mean? Well, everybody we touch, 
we destroy every legitimate person. We take a check from. Where's the government going to do? They're going to go to that person, investigate that person. We just may put them out of business or got them a grand jury subpoena that we're taking checks from them. Why are you giving these guys money? That was my meaning of being a disease. Yeah. If we're going to do deal with legitimate people or people that we're working with to get money, to launder money, you're going to bring heat on them. And that's what I meant by the comment, we're a disease. John, take the cash. Don't take the check from this guy. That's how that conversation started. He's going to go in the grand jury again. Yeah. You're going to hurt him. So yeah. that's what I meant. Uh, but, the, you, you know, you really should. Uh, I'm going to call you Professor right now. Professor. Professor. Or maestro. Teacher. <laughs> Which one do you like? I like Professor better. Yeah, of course. That's higher. Give me that. Yeah. So I can't call you Rabbi. Professor, can we professor? Even though I have Hasidims for Michael out there. So there's somebody out there, Hasidims for Michael. Did you see that one? N no, no. Yeah, on our Patreon, I think it is. Okay, or, not on YouTube. Or both, which was a high compliment. The uh, reason I ask is because I've talked to a lot of street guys, and I've talked to many guys who I've talked to guys. You introduce me to people. I always ask this question because I don't look to judge first. I look to understand first. So, but I, what I've, somebody gave me an answer. There's a guy I met on here said, RJ, truthfully, in, in the moment, we don't feel like bad people. Like, like you almost don't even think you're doing anything wrong. And I really thought about that for a long time. Like, from his mindset, the way people live in your organization, maybe they just see the world through an entirely different lens. So that's why I wanted to ask you that. You ready for the big stuff now? That was it? That was it. You ready for the big stuff? Okay. All right. Yeah, let's go. Big stuff? Like in like plural or is it one thing? Well, you know. you. you we don't want to bore these people. We don't want to bore these people out there yeah. with this. All right. Let's go. They seem okay. We keep going up. Here's a little trick that you don't know because I'm the moderator. This is uh, I'm I'm gonna this is something that every content creator who does lives will tell you. As they're talking, they're always keeping their eye on the number of people who are here. As it's going up or maintaining, you know they <laughs> you know they're interested. When they start going do, 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 going down, you know shift direction, ask new questions, change everything. So. I'm watching. We're okay. We're, we're going like this. We're at 620. I, I'm, I'm laughing at something. You got to read Bruce City. Uh, do you see Bruce City? Let's see. Michael Scars in the government's eyes, he's a criminal. Funny because in my eyes, the government's the government <laughs> is criminals. <laughs> That's pretty good, bro. Uh, Very witty. So, Michael, you told me early on, RJ, we don't discuss anything outside of my time in the streets. 2002, I was off the streets. We talked from 2002 backwards. We don't talk from 2002 forward. Feels good to be able to ask you a current question. <laughs> there was a big meetup. And I want to get your reaction to it because the whole John was talking about it. Everyone had an opinion of it. And it would not be right if I didn't get your reaction. So, A, I want your reaction to uh, Lee Cole drove to and guys i did get permission i texted over to these guys these gentlemen they, they gave me permission thank you guys for playing your clip um and please go subscribe to lee cole and james proctor's channel um this is their content and i believe that you should i'm not going to play much of the video because i'd rather people give them what they worked for so go over there and watch it but michael i want your reaction to the incident itself like what do you think about, I mean, we watched the whole video. So, A, I want your reaction to the the situation. And I also want to play, um, and we'll play a section of it here, and then you can react. All right, hold and on. We, before you, yeah, before you do it. Okay. Uh, you preface this by saying we don't talk about anybody after 2002, right? Correct. Well, this is fair game because he cooperated. Yeah. We're not talking about somebody that's in the life or may be in the life or thought about being in the life or somebody I dealt with that may be still in the street. This is a little different. This is fair game, like I'm fair game, and every other every other guy like me that, did, that flipped, 
comes on here is fair game. So anything we say should be challenged. Right? What do you oh, think? Fair, 100%. Okay. I was just, I was being facetious. Like, no, no, you know, just, say, yeah. and just for yeah. clarity, because yeah. he's, he's not part of the street. Even though he thinks he's still Cosa Nostra, he's Cosa Mia, not Cosa Nostra for himself and his wife. But let's go. Now you're going to make me start getting itchy. <laughs> All right, here we go. I live, I got family here. I just wanted to say hi to you. I wanted to ask you about Alan Kaiser. How come you never talk about Alan Kaiser? And what I really meant to say to him is, why don't you mention Alan Kaiser's? Um, hang on. Hang on. Okay, now if you know it wasn't too clear, brother. Can we make it bigger so that because it's captioned, can we make it bigger so those words? That it being said, no, I have no way to zoom in on it. Um, right. let me think. You want to play one more time for everybody? Maybe to get clarity for the people that did not see it. I'm sure a lot of people did see that, but just for the ones that did not, see if we could get the uh, and don't stop it, just let it run. Okay. Maybe that's the problem. It's buffering. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, wrong one. Hang on. Um, we call it. Um, all right, there we go. Mm. He got involved. Yeah, it's not very clear on their end, but that's what I got. Okay, now. Yeah, so I can't get a very clear version, so I'll give a rundown and I'll leave a link for people to watch. So, Sammy, as Lee Cole says, hey, what's going on? Uh, you don't speak about Alan Kaiser. Sammy walks up to Lee. Oh, well, hold it up. Tell the audience if they don't know who Alan Kaiser is. So, Alan Kaiser was killed. Um, there's no. Uh, real answer. I mean, uh, there was Sammy says the, the guy is a 16 year old boy who was killed. Um, Sammy says Lee, uh, that uh, Louis Melito pulled the trigger, uh, I believe. And then what is said by others is that it was actually Sammy who killed him. Um, so Lee says, Hey, why don't you talk about Alan? He says, Hey, I did a video about it, it's a sad situation. And Alan Kaiser, I spoke with the family, and you know, I've apologized to the family, I've been in touch with the family. Um, and then a incident ensues, a little bit of a confrontation, and Lee pulls off. I guess I'm well. I shouldn't say Lee pulls off. I didn't see that, but there was a confrontation between Sammy and I mean between Lee and Sammy's son. Reaction. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you go to Lee's site and and pull this up, you'll see it better. And see the way Sammy's walking. Watch his body language with his arms. I've had a walk, several walks with Sammy when he had that disposition of confrontation with myself on a situation that I will explain the story. But that walk is the walk he took me on. Very great, aggressive, very assertive, hands down, uh, head down, arms moving aggressively like that. That's his bull moments when he's hyped up Ravano. He walks and talks like that. He still has it today. So he poses a, an answer that he did a video and he says he spoke to Alan Kaiser's family and apologized and they accepted it. He reiterates right now with Lee Cole. This is how much this guy is a nut and a liar. Joy Farachi, who's here right now with us, 
says Gravano pulled the trigger, like a lot of other people believe he did. But the most compelling point to this is he has the, the gall to say he spoke to Alan Kaiser's family. How could he not think that Joy Ferracci would not go public or not make me a voice for her and her family to say he's lying? The guy is a pathological liar. I don't know what other clinical words to use for this guy. I'm just going to say he's a nut for, just for, for these purposes. He never spoke to their family. He never apologized to their family. He never apologized to Joy. He never talked to her. The guy is presenting something that he's not like everything else he does. Well, here we are talking about Gravano again, but he prompted this again. I don't know how everybody's not talking about this on here. To challenge this guy. Joy Faraci gave me permission to say this. He's a liar. Never happened, and she wouldn't accept it. He had 40 years or whatever since Allen's been, been murdered by him to apologize, send a letter, etc. Never has. This has come from Joy. So all this stuff about him apologizing and them accepting it is a lie. Where he gets it from, he must have dreamt it sometime or another. So we're going to ex extend our condolences to the Kaiser family and Joy. And thank you, Joy, for letting us be able to come out front and challenge this guy. Okay. Um, one gets your reaction on one other thing. Uh oh. I talked to you off the record, I mean, off the screen about it, but I wanted to get your reaction to. You're starting to blush. You're getting a little red. I am? A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. I don't know. You look a little blushy right now. What do you think about the new sports betting show, uh, Joey Molino's sports betting show? I think it's. Well, I haven't seen the session yet. I don't know. How's his picks? Anybody know out there? How's his picks going? I don't know. I'm not sure what they are. Jeff Nadeau, if you're in the chat, tell me what his record is so far. I'm sure Jeff follows it. So Jeff's in communication with them. So. Well, look, I, I think it's just a sign of the times. It's a notion of uh, the mafia doesn't exist. Uh, that, that, that music can't be played anymore. Everybody knows it exists. Uh, I'm not saying I never met Joey as a wise guy, a boss, or anything that they say he is. I, I can't say what he is. Um, he is a, uh, a lightning rod of, of, a, of an individual that has the uh, the ire of the government. And, the, uh, you know, when I was on trial in, in the, the Atlanta case, uh, we were on trial together. He was on trial in Philly, and I was on trial in Atlanta. Uh, we exchanged pleasantries to lawyers, to attorneys. Never met him. Um, but I think that's the way of the world today. I think more and more people are coming out, coming forward, even from prison. Right? You had prisoners, some doing life, never coming home, contradict content makers on what they said and things that happened. So I think people get more and more vocal that were embedded in that life and, um, you know, trying to put the, their mark in today's society of, of what's going on with the, the mafia. Maybe not the intricacies of the mafia, but if Joey wants to come out and talk about sports, talk about cigars, talk about alcohol, you know, it's a different world we're living in now. Those old timers, you know, I, I told somebody the other day, he says, yeah, uh, the guys in their 50s were talking about old timers. I said, old timer? You're, you're 50 years old. You're an old timer. What are you talking about? <laughs> you're an old timer. You know, but we don't see each other that way. I'm 68, working on 69. I'm a real old timer getting up there, you know. Not in that life anymore, but still uh, an elder statesman. Will, will understand this. So now people are coming out, and, and I think it's going to bode well for them. It's like public relations. You know, what was John Gotti? 
my public. He got criticized for it. Yeah, different time. What John was saying, my public, and he told me one time, Michael, I'll show you how to beat cases. And you know, I pondered that, like, uh, yeah, these guys are fixing trials. Well, you know, how are we going to beat cases here? But his thing was, face up. Don't put your when you get arrested. Don't put your your coat over your head or a sweater over your head and run in there like you were child molester. Walk in with your head up. Walk in proud like you did nothing wrong. Sign a guilt if you start covering your head. What are you afraid of? You're supposed to go in there to presumption of innocence. So I think John was a little bit ahead of his time with saying, uh, my public, it means let's get out there. Let's let the public know that we're not at that bad. Let them think that we, we, we could rub elbows with them. We could throw a 4th of July party. We could give out turkeys. We could donate to charities. We could sit in a restaurant and send you over a drink. It's public relation. You know, I, I think he was on the right track with letting the public know that you're that regular guy who's anti-government, just like Robin Hood or any other uh, person throughout, Bonnie and Clyde or Dillinger. Don't forget, during the Depression days, uh, the government was not liked at all. The country collapsed. And the bad guy was became the hero throughout time. So uh, I think that's part of, if Joey's doing that just for uh, to make a living, God bless him. If he's doing for public relations, he's smart. <laughs> if he's doing it because he's good giving out picks and he wants everybody the money, God bless him again. Good luck. But uh, he, he'll probably say, fuck that rat. I don't want to hear anything he says good about me, but that's okay. He's allowed to say that. I put myself in this chair. But uh, guys like him who come out front and want to change their ways and not commit crimes, why not? Let them earn a good living. What's the difference? So he becomes celebrity status. Would he be the first guy in mafia history that was a celebrity? No. Is he going to be the last? Probably more open in the future. <laughs> Maybe somebody could run for uh, mayor of New York. Can't hurt. Can't hurt. <laughs> I know a few guys in the street that make great mayors. Now, should the uh, could could the uh, or should uh, the mob be like uh, innovating these days and moving with the times? And podcasting's a big world. Should the mob get into the podcasting racket? <laughs> well, you don't think you don't think through history the mob always moved with society with the need. Yeah. They gave society what they needed, prohibition, right? Volstead Act, 1919, I believe. Fact mm -hmm. check on that, I think. Knock the rust off of that one. A temperance movement's temperance movement started in the 1800s, right? And it was anti-alcohol along with other stuff. Uh, you know, what the what the mob do? They supplied alcohol to judges, politicians, cops, who were people, human beings with human needs and human habits. They provided that service that was illegal. But who did you say the temperance movement? Is that what you said? Temperance movement. You don't know about that? The female group that was trying to get alcohol banned? Lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. You know, Michael, this is why. <laughs> see, I'm an avid reader. So I always love when you throw out these little historical things. I'm like, wow, it's nice we can have. This. You know, though, it really wasn't about alcohol, temperance movement. It was a multitude of things. Look, they were again, trying to get in their ass beat by their husbands who would come home drunk and beat on them. And they said, <laughs> so it, it was, let's get rid of alcohol so this motherfucker stops coming home and beating on me drunk. A woman had no way to make her earn a living back there then. She didn't go to college back then. They were just essentially housewives. And this guy's out drinking at the saloon and he's coming home with an attitude. He's mad about, you know, everything and he wants to put his hands on them. And they were like abuse. It wasn't even just physical, but a lot. It was just being drunk around the house all the time. All the, everyone was drinking. They would come home being an asshole to the kick the cat, beat the dog, beat the kid, beat the uh, wife. So I, I got a question. <laughs> it was repealed. Both that act was repealed, right? <laughs> yes. Did it? Did everybody go back? All right, let's go back to beating our wives. <laughs> no, it's that silly. You know, I, listen. I'm not contradicting what you said or their movement. Um, because there was other things in their movement. <laughs> not in the 1800s, don't forget. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I think it's not in the 1800s. 
and then 1919 was Volstead Act. Look it up real fast. See if I'm right. Volstead Act. And then it was repealed. But nobody went home and beat their wives up because they were drinking again legally. Well, but, well, okay. That's the, I'm going to. Ah, come on. It's, no, it's if, you read a lot of the, if you read a lot of the speeches and stuff. Hey, the wives go home and beat up the guys. <laughs> and it was attached to the Christian movement, I think, too, where there was like anti Christ, there was anti Christian religion, all that kind of stuff. Still is, talking, another subject. Still is. Yeah, today. another subject. You're right. <laughs> um, That was fun. That was a good show. That's it? That's it. Hour and 10 minutes. What 10 minutes passed? Uh, I mean, no, that's it. I thought maybe I had some more questions. No, I got no more questions. I asked all my questions, but I saved the last two for the last two questions for the end. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good. We want to take some questions out of the, out of the live. Yeah, I was looking Lachaim at was, Putz. who's that? It was, Lachaim, Lachaim, Lachaim Putz. Putz. <laughs> it was mostly I was watching it. Um, a lot of it was statements more than. Okay, that's good. Still in questions, but uh, that's good. Um, no, it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Well, look, um, I understand that the Alan Kaiser, I don't know if it's true or not, the Alan, uh, uh, Alan Kaiser stuff and the Shibeta stuff is under seal, some of it, or was it wasn't really fully disclosed, which I don't understand. Uh, because again, I didn't see Sammy's 302s, so uh. I see some of them that are online on, on Smoking Gun. If anybody wants to go to Smoking Gun, Gravano 302s, go there. It's interesting. We haven't ever seen it. Um, they have some, some of that stuff. And then now our tapes, like I said, the uh, Raven Eye tapes is really interesting. We posted uh, – did, did 8 and 9 get posted yet, RJ? Did we get a chance? We had that glitch. They're not up yet, but they'll be up today. Okay, fa fantastic. So yeah. – you get a chance go over there and listen to them, and I, I, I think you get a real education on uh, what uh, on the inner workings of the Gotti mind, the Gravano mind, and Lucasio, and, and uh, the subject matter that comes on there. I think you find it really interesting. Yeah, guys, I think the most compelling uh, content that this, this that we've delivered as a participant in this genre is the Gotti tapes. I mean, you really get to see I said this to even Anthony Cardinale personally that the only thing he was missing from that trial was he didn't have Michael there and break down the tapes like because you really do see it differently when you have when you can understand the street vernacular that's the thing it's easy to paint a guy like a scumbag for his way of speak but if you take John's way of speak and you compare it to a commoner it's just so different he has a street tongue so Michael took a street tongue and explained it to you in layman's terms, how you can understand what he was actually saying. And it really paints a different picture. I mean, we, we got 10 hours of, of breakdown. It's nine part series. And we got two more to do, but we, we did nine so far that are done. And it really shows you the other side that has never been made public. We put part one and part two out on YouTube and we'll put another one out at some point, but, um, we have put out part one and part two, and it really does open up. It really does open people's eyes towards the other angle of it. So join us on Patreon. You can watch the next seven sections. But, guys, thank you again. Please subscribe. Um, Michael, I'm surprised how big this live was. We I announced it with 20-minute notice. I did a 20-minute notice. I posted it the, the show in 20 minutes before we, we came on. I got almost 700 people in, in, in the live chat. So it was, um, but we usually do pretty good in our lives, but it was a big, a big show. Oh, good. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for being here and listening to us. And again, we don't have a wrench. And uh, explain what a wrench is for the people that don't know, because I didn't know. I learned. Um, yeah, so that's just moderators who can moderate the chat. People can come in and knock people out and stuff like that. So we don't have any moderators, um, which I tell you, I was, I'm very proud of that, Michael, because when I, remember our first live? And you want to go live on our, um, and we don't do a lot of lives on here, but our first live, I said, Michael, I don't know, it's going to be, we're going to need four or five moderators. It gets nasty in these lives. And I was asking other people who do lives and they said, whatever you do, do not publicize it like a week in advance or anything, because you're going to get people who are going to just, everyone's going to be like getting together, making plans to come sabotage your chat. 
we put it up a week in advance not live and I, I got four people to moderate. I said, all right, I got four people set up. At the end, I called everybody. Oh, we didn't block anybody. I took all the wrenches away. We never use wrenches now. <laughs> so You know, and, and that's a compliment to uh, the people in this genre. Yeah, you're going to get people that are loyal to, let's say, Sammy and the, the Die Hots, and that's fine. You know, if you, you want to follow him, that's okay. Uh, just that we'll have something else to say. But it speaks volumes about, uh society here for us in this part of our society that we really don't have that you know even in our comment section very few people we blocked on youtube only when they get racial or they get uh really start going after other commenters because that's where the problem occurs not even with me or you they really go after other commenters and that's when we stop that we don't want to dis disrupt uh somebody trying to give good input or their opinion we take the neg negative opinion coming to us as long as it's respectful. That's it. So uh, RJ did a great job, and all the people, and I want to thank you uh, for keeping this real. Yeah, guys, I can't profess my gratitude enough, which is we did a big, a nice, real um, live event recently. I will show it. Uh, we'll put the stuff together. We brought, like, over 10 people. Um, we had up to – we had 16 confirmed people who were going to come. We paid for dinner for everybody. Had a, everyone got to meet Mike as the surprise guest, um, and it was really. But I really try to tell people like this is like I'm truly, really grateful for how this whole thing turned out. I mean, I can't be more grateful. Um, you know, it's tough on mob genre. It's tough being on here. It's a lot of fighting. People are just so negative. It's just it's tough. It's real hard in this genre. And it's real hard to impress an audience in this genre. And uh, we've done well. I mean, again, today we celebrate 3 million views today and 19,000 subscribers. And that's 19,000 real subscribers. I'm, I'm telling a lot of these channels got fake subscribers. I'm, I ain't going to call no one out. They know who they are. But a lot of fake subscribers in this genre, a lot of fake views, fake everything. We got certified real channel. And it's not easy get earning subscribers and stuff. They don't just rain down. You 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 get it through credibility. You you get it through support. You get it, and you get a continuously growing channel through doing it an honest way with integrity and discipline and and um, being interactive. Again, I said it before. We had over forty thousand comments. Every single comment was individually answered by Michael. If you would like to test what I'm saying. Go in the comments of this video and, and leave a comment and you will see Michael will respond to you. So he's up to three, four o'clock in the morning, most nights answering comments. So this is a real interactive thing that we try to do here, trying to really do something good. So yeah, and, and along the lines with the comments on YouTube, sometimes they'll lag. I've said this before, but it does happen. Like we'll get comments sometimes up to two or three months later, they'll just pop up on here. And, uh, you know, we get a little embarrassed because we're not we're not ignoring you. RJ and I and Mikey, we try to get to everything we can. Um, the ones that oppose it, RJ, even sometimes I'll answer, answer because he's really inundated with stuff. And, uh, you know, it's it's it, it's rewarding. I know it's rewarding for all three of us. We have a lot of fun doing this. You know, this here is what I was just trying to explain. YouTube is a very difficult place. There's some people that are just here to, and I want to, so the people don't, they often don't understand what they're talking about. So you have a public view, and then you have a behind scenes view. Any video that gets changed to unlisted or private, the public view doesn't show that viewership. So if you go into our about section and you click our views, it'll say 2.7 million views possibly i'm guessing that's what the guy what he's saying congrats on he's being funny congrats on 2.7 million views but he just he just doesn't understand that an unlisted or private video removes your public view uh rj <laughs> well, maybe you do this uh take a picture right now oh, well, with your phone. i'll do it take you do it right now with your phone for I'll, the, I'll post it on our community i'll because yeah it's not yeah, give it you back know, yeah, i'll go on to our community and i'll and i'll post it so yeah, because we're not embellishing by uh, that little bit, 300,000. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, guys, we really do appreciate it. I appreciate it. The genre has been very welcoming to me. The new guy's been so welcoming to Michael. Thank you, guys. We can never thank you enough. Um, if you want to join us on Patreon, please join us on Patreon. We have a very 
community feel on Patreon. We have a great community of people. We, we do. Uh, if you have a problem with your family, you need someone to talk to. We will call you. We have done it. Everybody can tell you no matter what you're going through in life. If you're in a crisis, we call. If you need uh, financial support for the channel, we help. We pay for every membership that people can afford to pay. Everybody, that's every donation. We got some donations today. Thank you. Um, we got a $19 donation and a $5 donation. Um, all the donations that this channel has ever gotten from the time we started until right now goes into a, a, a reserve for us to help people with whatever they need for be, uh, being a part of our Patreon and, and things like that. And we use it to put live events together. So we did five or six live in-person meetups. Um, so that all that money goes towards things like that. So thank you guys. If you want to join us on Patreon, you're really going to see it's never before photographs, tons of them. Um, you, you can touch Michael so easily. It's very easily in touch Michael. So you can talk to him, interact with us. It's a real nice, a real nice place. I tell every content creator, go over to Patreon. It's a lot nicer than YouTube. <laughs> Michael, I'm, got, I'm done. You close it out, brother. All right. Uh, just one more thing about Fat Irish. He just said, uh, what the fuck? He could he said congratulations. Yeah. No, it's nobody nobody challenged you that way. We're just making it RJ made an adjustment that it is three million uh on the nose just about right now, probably a little bit over. Uh you put two point seven, just to be clear, it wasn't two point seven. We're not gonna say we got three million when we had two point seven. It's a minor you, little, a minor little thing, but uh it's uh, it, you posted 2.7. It was like saying that we embellished a little bit. I think that's where RJ is just correcting it. So I'm, I'm happy you're on here and fact checking us. So we're about facts. That's why RJ just uh, had said that, that we are at 3 billion. Bad Irish, come over to Patreon. I'll pay for your membership. Send me an email. Yeah, he's there. He's there. Oh, he, he is. He's one of our guys. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. definitely retract my statement now because Patreon's all good. It's all good people over there. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's bad, bad Irish. <laughs> no, he's there. I think he's, I think, again, he's reading the number and uh, I don't think it was to embarrass us. I think it was just that uh, he, I thought he was being sarcastic. Okay. Oh, all right. You know, we I could be technical too at times, right? And we mean you go back and forth and, uh, you know, sometimes I, I hang out. Irish. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. And uh, the the Vinci the Vinci's and J and V pizza in Brooklyn were my fa favorite, and Pizza Wagon also was pretty good. There was a lot of good pizzerias in Brooklyn. Uh, just to throw out a couple of questions that answers the question. Yeah. And Frankie Baranka, Frankie Martin, yes, I did know him. Tough old timer, an Albert guy, his brother too. Uh, Frankie was a good guy, tough guy. You had to like you had to know Frankie to like him because otherwise he'd come off very abrupt. He was an abrupt guy. Clutching hand. He's one of the old timers. Guys, great live, great show. Thank you guys for being a part of it. Uh, uh, don't think because we're on Patreon, we just forget about YouTube. We, we like to include you guys in the, into things. So, right. um, so thank you guys. We really appreciate all the support. Uh, peace and love. Michael, close it out. Uh, we're going to have a uh, another live on Saturday for our Patreon members. So if anybody wants to jump over, we're over there. Our Patreon members, get your questions ready whatever it is. Uh, we're going to talk something about Peter Gotti, his son being stabbed. So if anybody wants to do a little homework out there, uh, then we'll have a little something to talk about on that issue. Um, so God bless. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Stay well. Get along. Smile. Enjoy life. Short. There you go. Take care. Peace and love.